Hello, my name is Jim Rosenbaum. It's my pleasure to share with you the results of our study on HLA-B27 and its effects on COVID-19 infection. This was a survey study organized primarily by the Spondylitis Association of America. Most of us probably learned in grade school that a basic principle of evolution is that genetic polymorphisms persist if they offer a selective advantage. The classic example of this is hemoglobin S, which is the cause of sickle cell anemia, but also offers protection against malaria. The most polymorphic genes in humans belong to the HLA system. Some argue that this immense polymorphism helps to protect a species against a pandemic. HLA-B27 has been studied in this regard. It appears to offer some protection against HIV and hepatitis C, and possibly against influenza infection. The Spondylitis Association of America conducted a survey on COVID-19 between April 10 and May 31, 2020. The main purpose of the survey was to determine if spondyloarthritis or the medications used to treat spondyloarthritis influence the severity or susceptibility to COVID-19. Those results have been published separately as a letter to the annals of the rheumatic diseases. The survey also allowed a test of the hypothesis that HLA-B27 would influence susceptibility or severity of COVID-19. To address this question, we analyzed 3,435 respondents to our survey. 2,836 respondents, or 82.6%, knew their B27 status, with 2,157 being positive and 679 being negative. We assessed both the incidence and severity of COVID-19. The survey included 41 subjects who believed that they had COVID-19, although that was based on positive testing in only 18. Remember that the study was conducted early in the epidemic when testing was not universally available. 10 of the 679 B27 negative subjects reported having had COVID, a rate of 1.5%. The rate was almost identical among B27 positive subjects, 1.4% or 31 of 2,157. This table is published with our report. It shows that the self-assessed severity of COVID-19 was not statistically significantly different as a result of B27 status. So in conclusion, HLA-B27 does not appear to have a major influence on susceptibility or severity of COVID-19. The limitations of our study include that we captured a relatively small number of subjects with COVID-19. The survey is ongoing to test the validity of our conclusions. Our study included subjects without confirmed coronavirus infections. And as a survey, we relied on subjects for medical information without obtaining documented office records. My co-authors and I want to thank the SAA, which in turn received funding from AbbVie for this project. We also received support from the Grand Mason Fund for Autoimmunity Research, the Stan and Medell Rosenfeld Family Trust, and the William and Mary Bauman Foundation.